Okay, boys and girls, you all remember that little Admiral record player, right? One that I would started on a while back, and I said I'd be getting to probably in March. Well, it's a lot later than March, but I am finally getting to it. So um, I'm gonna, I'm just taking apart some things now to kind of keep them safe. And one of those things has got to be this speaker. Uh, that speaker's in a real hazardous place. Another thing is this loop antenna. You really don't want to leave these things sort of out there banging around while you're working on them. You can always put them back on when you're ready to test things or connect them with gator wire if you need to. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this loop antenna. It looks like the, the beige wire is on the right hand terminal and the set of terminals is close to me and the black one is on the left. And you know what, since I'm going to be removing this uh, tuning condenser at some point anyway, um, because it is suspended on, looks like there's a, yep, there's a, there's a couple of grommets on it. I think I'll go ahead and disconnect it right here. So I'll go ahead and melt the solder on this little, this little connector and we'll begin work on this thing. I've got two of these. It's not that they're common, I just happen to have them and I really like them. It's a big Bakelite cabinet. They're really pretty, and they actually uh, perform pretty well for a little, a little all-American. I think it's, you'd call this an all-American six chassis design for the radio, or maybe just one tube is strictly for the record player piece. I don't know, but it's ba it's basically a six-tube chassis, and a very simple design. Really, fairly easy to get this stuff on the chassis. I may as well go ahead and clean up that little. Uh, that little tuning capacity, tuning condenser terminal. Rather than leaving it for later, I might as well get it right now. Get the solder off of it. There we go. Nice rubber smell. We'll go ahead and melt this one off of there. Okay, so. Now I can set this little bugger aside. Really, did I say anything about needing the helper? Oh well, I guess I have one whether I want one or not. Now, the next thing I want to worry about is something that is easily damaged also. And that's this speaker. It looks like it already has a tear in it and a little tear right there, but they're easy to fix. Go ahead and get this speaker off of here, and uh, I'm going to disconnect it from the uh, output transformer right now. It's probably not critical which wire goes to which terminal, but one of them is longer, so I'll go ahead and and uh, get them disconnected. And I've got it on video, so I can remember which one goes where. After working on that Westinghouse, which had a lot of nasty solder, you know, some, the solder didn't want to melt. Um, this is kind of a joy. This solder is melting real easy. I don't understand wrapping wire around a terminal four or five times. It just seems silly to me doesn't give you any better electrical connection and it just makes it a pain in the keister to take apart when you have to. And then this guy here apparently likes solder because there's a bunch of it on this thing. I don't know if this is factory but I don't, I don't, you don't see factories wrapping terminals too often like this so I'll bet this has been off before. Alright, speaker is disconnected electrically. Let's go ahead and pull that lamp off of the little holder that's on the speaker mount. And uh, I think it looks like there are three screws that hold this speaker in place. One of these screws is a quarter inch screw right here. A little permanent magnet speaker which is nice because if there's anything wrong with the speaker it's easy and inexpensive to replace. 
right so and it's okay to set this down this is a nice solid uh, frame so and uh, I already checked these uh, IF transformer uh, cans are on there nice and nice and firm so no no worries there's a couple of standoffs behind these screws for this speaker so that it can sit off the chassis a certain distance and that's all there is to it remove those screws and you see the screws go through the speaker like so and there's a standoff there and then one on each side just screws into the chassis there's a small tear right here barely visible and then a bigger tear right here both of these can be repaired quite easily so I'll go ahead and fix those and I'll fix this little hole here too alright that makes this a lot safer to handle in fact it makes it real easy to just lay it like this and I think I'll work on it like this by the way if you haven't seen it there's the sticker for the radio it's on the bottom of the chassis Check out this ad I have for, I believe, a 1947 Admiral console that I used to own. Admiral was touting that the new tone arm that they developed as a result of all their work during the war. And uh, they really hyped it up. And I'll tell you something, you know, Admirals did make nice record players post-World War II. In fact, some of their mechanisms are some of the nicest ones that I've worked on. And they do sound good for 78-only players. So perhaps there was something to this ad. I am going to take this Sharpie and put a little black tick mark by each of the holes that mounted the speaker. It's no big deal. I probably won't ever need to refer to them, but just in case. You know what? I don't know if I really want these speakers standoffs kicking around. And I think I would rather just screw them back in the chassis from whence they came. That is a whole lot easier for me to remember where the hell they go later. Because, you know, I'm getting to be an old man. And the old uh, memory banks are a little bit on the rusty side. So, go ahead and screw these back in. It's a good idea, guys, when you're doing work like this. It's really cool to baggy stuff up, but you can lose stuff out of baggies. Believe me, I manage to do that kind of thing all the time. But it's a lot easier to keep track of things and know exactly where what goes where if you go ahead and just put the screw back in the hole and uh, tighten it down normally tight, not real tight. You don't want to stretch any threads, but tighten it down so it's not going to come out of there. And now I won't forget where that is. And the video will tell me what I what it is that was holding down. So, and that way they're not kicking around in this bag with the speaker, maybe looking to cause some mischief in there. Got a uh, brand new macro lens coming for one of my um, my cameras here in a couple days for my DSLR. And a macro is a useful lens for taking real good close-up shots. So. Uh, this is a little uh, 40 millimeter lens, Nikon F-mount lens. It's not anything terribly fancy. The lenses are expensive, so you can go broke on them if you're not careful. I got it because wifey, I got wifey a, a, a Nikon DSLR also, and she sells jewelry on Etsy. And uh, jewelry by Meridine, it's called. Jewelry by Meridine. One of these days I'll show you some pictures of what she's got, what she offers on there. But anyway... She needs to take close-up pictures of her jewelry. So I bought this lens to experiment for her. And if I like it, I'll, I'll let her keep that one and I'll buy one for me. All right. This frame is off of there. This little insulating pad. I might make a new one, but this one maybe is okay. Looks untouched, eh? I'm real happy about that. I'll go ahead and put these screws back in, too. Um... I'm doing this because I don't I don't want to lose track of them. This looks like it won't uh, be any big deal. This uh, big electrolytic there looks like it's got three caps in that one that one capsule there. So I'll probably be putting three electrolytics in here. A whole bunch of waxies. I like that radio, TV, phono nut calls them waxies. I kind of like that. I hope he doesn't mind that I kind of bogart his term. But uh, there we go. Nothing to it, eh? This should be a simple chassis to do.
Let me show you something that's always a good thing to do. I always print a schematic on a fairly large piece of paper. This one here, I always print on 13 inch by 19 inch. It's called Super B format. And I do that because I want to have some room to write notes. And then the first thing I do is if the schematic does not have um, component values uh, listed on the schematic itself, then I'll go ahead and take those component values uh, from wherever I can get them and write them right here on the schematic. Usually I'll find the component values on the parts list. So obviously it's going to list each part individually with the price on it back way back when, which is kind of cool. I wish I could get them at the, those prices now. But it lists the values of each individual component. So I'll take each one of those and write that number down. And that way when I'm troubleshooting, I don't have to go back and forth between the parts list and the uh, schematic. That'll wear you out. And this also helps you sometimes to see things that you otherwise might not have seen. And it familiarizes you with the circuit and with, with the schematic and makes it easier for you later on. Um, I'll go ahead and do all the caps and then I'll go about measuring resistors. You know, if I get to places where there's a resistor attached to the same point as a cap, well then I'll check that resistor out right away. But usually this vintage here, these carbon resistors are often about three quarters of them are good, so I'll check them all. I don't replace the resistors if they're good. If they haven't drifted much by now, they're not going to drift much, so I'm going to leave them be. But the, of course the waxies will go. Somebody had gone to the trouble of replacing this power cord, which is good because I won't have to do that. That's going to save her a little money. And uh, really, it's a nice clean chassis. Nothing to it, guys. I'll clean the, you know, I'll clean all the. The pots, the controls, the switch, and the pots. And I'll clean the tube sockets, you know, the usual stuff. But uh, beyond that, there's not a lot to this guy. And I should, uh, I'll be hitting the record player part of it uh, a couple videos from now. Just to refresh your memory, there's a shot of the, the cabinet for this Admiral. And as I mentioned, it's Bakelite, and it's in pretty good shape. This will be a nice looking record player when it's all done. The first thing I want to do is replace this electrolytic capacitor. These kind that are clipped like this, they usually just slip right out. Now you have to be careful with what's around it, but uh, if I'm real careful here, I should be able to get this out. I'm gonna have to watch this little coil. So let me see if I can manage this. I think I can. There we go. Now, wow, look at how that isn't that interesting? This was probably, I don't know if you can see, but look at how that thing is deformed. I got a feeling that's been like that since it was new. Now, if this, whether or not this is an original capacitor for this radio, it's hard for me to tell. But that can't be right. That has to have affected the performance of this thing. So what we have are, um, we have two 30 microfarads at 150. I can't tell if that's 150 or 450. We got a 20 microfarad at 150, a 20 microfarad at 25. But we'll take a look at the schematic. I've got to print it up. I haven't done that yet. But uh, this thing, look at that. Look at what uh, this is from this clamp. That just that just can't be right. Maybe this got hot and the wax melted and allowed it to squeeze. Hard to say. But in any event, this thing is no good. And. Uh, the tower is leaking out of it, and it's just uh, it's just bad. So we got four capacitors there. So I'm going to need all of this space, every bit of this space, because I'm going to replace them with original with uh, individual capacitors. If you look closely at this capacitor, you'll see that it gives tells me the color of the various values: 30 microfarad yellow. Same thing for red. 20 microfarad at 150 volts for blue, and 20 microfarad at 25 volts for green. Great. So, um, for the 30s, I'm going to use these commonly available 33 microfarad at 450 volts. Okay, so that more than covers that for both of the power supplies, uh, both of the Pi filter capacitors. For the uh, 20 microfarad at 150 volts. I'm going to use this 22 microfarad at 160. That'll work just great. And then for the 20 microfarad at 25 volts, I'm going to use another 22 microfarad at 160. So these will all work great. 
I bought these at uh, on, off of a website that's uh, a pretty good website. You ought to check it out if you haven't seen it. There's lots of sources. I'm not really endorsing any one or another. You know, I just I'll tell you where I get mine, and I get them because I buy a bunch of bunch of them, and he gives me a pretty good price. And that's Bob's Antique Radios. And uh, I'll I'll go ahead and and and, uh, and show you or. Uh, that's Bob's Antique Radios. He does a real nice job. He gets the, the parts to me really fast. He gives me personal service. Um, you know, are they just, are they garden variety Chinese capacitors? Yeah, but he gives me a good price for them. So uh, I've been totally happy. And uh, when he, you know, one time when he didn't have exactly what I was looking for, he actually sent me an upgraded product. So he's treated me really well. And I like, I like Bob's quite a bit. All right, so. Because I know which ones are which, I can go ahead and clip these wires. I don't have to worry about it. And I can get this thing out of my way. Now, there is usually a ground lead also. So it didn't say anything on here at all about black. Ah, there we go. Common negative black. So there is a black wire that I clipped. I clipped five wires. They're in yellow, the red the blue, the green, and the black. So I'm gonna probably set up a couple of terminal strips here and I'll set up all these capacitors in those terminal strips. Before I do that, however, I'm gonna replace these grommets for this tuning condenser because it's easy to get to them here and I, I'm gonna cut this clip off of here because it's not gonna do me any good. So I'll get those, I'll get that clip cut off of there and I'll see what I need to do about these grommets before I put those caps in. And I'll show you what I come up with after I get all that done. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this little bracket. The way I'm gonna do that is I grind the rivet off very carefully. idea is you grind most of the head of the rivet off and you try not to get onto the chassis too much you can't avoid getting it on there a little bit and when you tap it out there you go piece of cake so like I said you can't avoid getting on there a little bit but I'm gonna put a screw head there so it's not gonna really show that much there will probably be a situation down the road where I'll be able to grind the rest of that rivet out of there and use this bracket if I want to so I'll go ahead and hold on to that. Looking in this part of the chassis, I can see that, well, this hole where, that where I just drilled out bracket, that will provide me a hole for a terminal strip. And there are a couple other holes already installed in the radio. So I'm not gonna worry about that right now. See, these, these take up a lot of space. I'm just not sure yet, but I'll figure out a, a way to do that. But for right now, what I'm concerned about is I want to take a look at those tuning co condenser um, grommets. So let me see if they're rubbery at all. Actually, they're pretty soft. And they may not need replacing at all. Let's take a look at the top side, see how well that thing is suspended. So looking at this tuning condenser, you can see it's actually suspended quite well. It's got plenty of flex. It's not loose. And uh, the truth is, there's no reason to replace those. And that being the case, I don't see any need to tear this out of here when it's in good shape. And why should the customer have to pay for new grommets that aren't needed? So I'm going to go ahead and leave that be. That's pretty cool because what that means is that I'm also not going to have to do anything at all with this uh, dial cord because this dial cord is in pretty good shape. The dial cord is nice and tight. It's it's not at all, it's not fraying anywhere. It looks really good. So again, no need to replace what doesn't what isn't bad. So I'm just gonna leave that be. All right. So that's great because that saves me time, it saves me energy, it saves the customer money, and it saves originality. So in every way it's good. If this cord were bad in any way at all, I'd replace it, believe me. It's not brittle, you can tell. It's got plenty of flex left in it. 
The spring is strong and good. Everything's good about this. All right, so let's get back to the underside of the chassis, okay? So what that means is I'm not going to have to do anything with these three screws or with the ground strap that comes in from this tuning condenser. Basically, this tuning condenser I can leave just well enough alone. So let's, uh, let's get some, some terminal strips mounted in here, and uh, we'll go from there. As you can see, I've replaced all the capacitors. It's kind of a, a crowded little assembly. But there were four capacitors built into that, that uh, one capacitor sort of tube. And uh, I wanted to put them all in the same location, so I built them up on this terminal strip. Uh, as you can see, I color-coded the positives for each of these capacitors, so it would be easy to locate the wires to them the, that uh, you know, match the original colors on the capacitor. And uh, then all the grounds uh, go together. Now, this is not a chassis ground. Remember, this is a series-strung set, so the, um, the, the ground for the circuit is isolated from the chassis with a capacitor. So all of these had to go to uh, a terminal on the terminal strip, which then went to the isolation capacitor. I strung new wires for each of these. And the reason for that was the original wires for this capacitor were just shot. They, they reminded me of pre-war wires where the rubber, uh, the rubber insulation dried out and cracked and broke away. There's one right there, the green. It's a new um, 600 volt um, cloth covered PVC insulated wire. So that's a, a good thing to have in the power supply. And now we'll move on to replacing all of these wax and paper capacitors. There are a bunch of them. And uh, in the process, I'll test all those resistors and make sure the resistors are good. There are quite a few uh, one watt resistors as part of the voltage divider that I'll need to test to make sure those are good. And then I'll test all of those small carbon resistors as well. It shouldn't take too long to get all of those done. So I'll go ahead and replace all those and test all those resistors. And in the next video, I'll show you the results. And we'll get on with the next phase of this little project. From your Western Outpost in Salt Lake City, on Wednesday, June the 7th, this is Michael. And that's all for now.